There is a beautiful legend which speaks of the South Atlantis, the sunken continent of Lemuria. There, there were dense ancient jungles inhabited by beings different from any others of an own. Unique creatures which arose in an independent world, isolated from the rest of the continents. It was a land of marvels and surprises. The animals had followed their own evolutionary models, giving rise to prodigious beings. Life had a second chance to experiment with prototypes, and the results were astonishing. There, the reptiles still ruled over the land. The plants acquired surprising forms, and in the thicket, hidden in the shadows of the jungle, lived strange men, silent, graceful ghosts, relatives of our own species, which were given the generic name of lemurs, the most emblematic inhabitants of Lemuria. According to the legend, Lemuria, like Atlantis, sank, but isolated in the Indian Ocean, a fragment of that fabulous continent remained, a solitary island where the animals would generously guard the secrets of their origins, a refuge for a wildlife that would later astonish the world, Madagascar. This is a Sifaka, a member of an extraordinarily unique zoological group. They are not monkeys and nor are they related to dogs. They are not insectivores and are entirely unlike the squirrels. Nonetheless, they do share with us distant ancestors from a time when the mammals fought for supremacy over the earth. They are lemurs, prosimians. The very name, a Roman word referring to spectres, gives an idea of the mystery and legend they inspired among naturalists and zoologists from all over the world before they were able to define their taxonomy. The legend of Lemuria is not as ancient as Plato's Atlantis, and therefore it took less time for the mystery to be resolved. Its creator, the zoologist Philip Lutley Sclater, suggested the story in 1874, and Wegener's theory of continental drift once and for all destroyed the legend of the southern continent. But despite the fact Lemuria was revealed as simply a myth, the great doubts concerning its origin did not end with the theories of Wegener because the strange independent beings of the island of Madagascar suddenly refused to conform to preconceived zoological models. Sclater himself drew the attention of the scientific world to the peculiarities of the creatures of Madagascar. There, the animals bore no similarities to those of the nearby continent of Africa. There were no large pachyderms, antelopes, giraffes or lions. There were no monkeys or felines. And yet there were great affinities between some of these creatures and the most archaic animals of South America, India and the Malaysia-Australia region. Where had these beings come from? What was the origin and the relationship of these children of the legendary Lemuria?
While these species of the world competed in a no-holds-barred evolutionary race, Madagascar developed at its own pace. Here, the hunters and their prey changed more slowly, away from the influences of new, much more specialized species, which natural selection was creating in the different continents. And in Madagascar, the distant world of the Triassic remained latent, producing a parallel evolution which generated the island's extraordinary zoology. A collared iguana observes a cricket that has abandoned the safety of its tunnel. Reptiles and invertebrates must have been the most common living beings in what is now Madagascar when it became independent from the continental lands, as at that time the earth was ruled over by the dinosaurs. The legacy of those days remains alive here on the island of Madagascar, where there are over 300 known species of reptiles, of which almost 90% are endemic. The dinosaurs disappeared as in the rest of the world, but the reptiles took over and lay claim to supremacy. These little dragons, which today divide between them the different habitats of Madagascar, indicate, however, that the children of Lemuria hold the secret of their origins. Because many Madagascan reptiles are related not to the reptile families of Africa, but rather to those that now inhabit the distant jungles of South America, Indo-Malaysia and Australia. And it is there in the heart of the still surviving jungles of remote southern countries that our search for the origin of the strangest fauna on the planet begins. Two hundred million years ago, the lands of the southern supercontinent Gondwana began to break apart. This was the birth of the continents as we know them today. At that time, vast jungles covered the lands of the southern hemisphere and the dinosaurs were the undisputed masters of creation. But there, deep in the dense Mesozoic vegetation, hidden among the shadows of a world ruled over by giants, already breathed small creatures with hair, the first mammals, a lineage that would eventually conquer the world. The Australian night fills with living shadows in the prehistoric forests of the Atherton Plateau in the northwest of the country. Small shy creatures like this brush-tailed opossum must have been the precursors of all present-day mammals. In the jungles of Gondwana, the huge dinosaurs simply did not notice them. But their warm-blooded bodies, their ability to keep their children inside them until they were completely developed, and their astonishing adaptability were to be the keys which would enable mammals to diversify and take over the world. All that was needed were the changes that would allow them to demonstrate their evolutionary potential. And those changes rapidly took place.
When Gondwana broke apart, the mammals were still scarce and primitive. A newly arrived group in a world which already for 3,000 million years had nurtured forms of life. In places that have since that time remained isolated, we can still today find clues as to what those first mammals must have been like. And in Australia, the largest of all, descendants of the most ancient group of all still survive. This strange animal is one of the few remaining representatives of the monotremes, a group of mammals so primitive that they still reproduce by laying eggs. The isolation of Australia meant that these ancient animals were not forced to compete against the more modern mammals which would develop in the still connected continental masses. Today, duckbilled platypuses and echnids like this one, another Australian monotreme which looks like a prehistoric hedgehog, have remained as testimony of the time when mammals were just beginning their successful development. Small insectivores, egg-laying monotremes and primitive marsupials, which developed in the isolation of Australia, were also to be found in the prehistoric jungles of Gondwana. But 50 million years after the peculiar mammals of Australia began their solitary life, their primitive insectivores began diversifying, evolving towards the groups from which would emerge the lemurs, all the monkeys of the world, and even man, the primates. And at this crucial point in the history of evolution, Madagascar began its existence in isolation. 